how Oracle manages concurrency. Well, this is a pretty cool slide. It basically tells us, again, <laughs> that we have row level and table level locks. And there are a few other varieties than what I have on the slide, but the two main categories of table lock are the X lock and the S lock. Same thing in SQL Server, come to think of it, because it's the same basic principle. An X lock is given at the row level, but it's possible to lock an entire table exclusively, and that's going to give that session that's granted that lock right access to the entire table. No other session will have right access to that table until the X lock is released. The share lock or S lock is more common. This is, I kind of look at it as an intent lock. A share lock at the table and an exclusive lock at the row level would allow the session free reign to make modifications at the row level, but that S lock prevents another session from DDLing the table. Remember that DDL stands for Data Definition Language, and it would prevent, say, another DBA from coming in and running an alter table. Something like that obviously would upset the proverbial apple cart, potentially. I mean, what if a user were updating rows, making very important changes? And then another DBA tries to run an alter table on that same table where they change a data type. I mean, I hope they wouldn't do something dumb like that. But you see, you, that kind of crazy stuff happens every day, especially if we've had too much coffee and not enough sleep. <laughs> so we see at the bottom of this slide a screen capture from Enterprise Manager Cloud Control 12C. And this is where we're going with this lesson. Where do you fit in as a DBA? If you have cloud control in your environment, it's very easy to see any blocks and waits that are happening. And what's happening here in the tip in the bottom of the screenshot lets us know that the locked session is indented below the session that's blocking it. So in this case, Sarah has issued some SQL on hr.employees. Notice that she has an exclusive lock on that row. The SQL ID, that's a hashed identifier. You can look at the specific code, and we will in our demo. Session ID, you can look at details regarding her session. What's awesome about Enterprise Manager, of course, is that it leaves nothing to the imagination, and you can just hyperlink your way through to drill in. And Sarah is blocking because she hasn't actually committed her transaction yet. HR is in there, also wants access to HR employees to a specific row ID. And it's not going to happen. You notice the three buttons, kill session, session details, and view object. You're going to have to decide as a DBA what you want to do. And the session that's killed, of course, is going to have to redo their code. They're going to have to rerun their transaction because it's going to get rolled back. 